Welcome to the Walton Pie. Today I'm going to go through the following three similar problems from complex analysis or any uh, course where you are doing series over complex numbers. So before I get started, if these are the sorts of videos that are helpful and you enjoy uh, this content, please consider liking and subscribing because it really helps me to keep making these videos. Okay, so for this first one, we are going to be showing that the power series of n times z to the n does not converge anywhere on the unit circle. So the first thing, and the easiest thing, would be to look at what's the radius of convergence. So the radius of convergence, this is going to be 1 divided by the limit as n goes to infinity of our a sub n's raised to the 1 over n, and those should actually be absolute values there. Uh, absolute value of a sub n raised to the 1 over n. So this is going to be a 1 over the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the 1 over n. Now that limit looks a little bit complicated because that's going to be a 0 to the infinity, but we can be able to rewrite that a little bit using uh, natural logs and L'Hopital's rule, and we can be able to work with that. And it turns out that that is going to be 1. So the radius of convergence is equal to 1, so that means that everything inside the unit circle converges, everything outside the unit circle diverges, and we have no idea what's going on on the unit circle. So that's not helping us out at all in this case. So we're going to have to do something else to show that it's not converging anywhere on the unit circle. Okay? But on the unit circle, we know that the size of z is equal to 1. So the modulus of z is 1 on the unit circle. And in order for a series to even have a chance at converging, we need the absolute value of the terms themselves to be going towards 0. But if we look at those terms, where we look at the modulus of n times z to the n, well, this is equal to n times modulus of z to the n, this is equal to n, and this is not going to 0. So that means that there is no chance whatsoever for this to converge. So we can say that so the, C, the sum of n z to the n diverges, or just fails to converge, on the unit circle. So that's how we would go through and do part A. Now for part b, we are trying to show that the sum of z to the n divided by n squared, that that's going to converge everywhere on the unit circle. So the easiest one for this is going to be looking at what the radius of convergence is. So we have z to the n divided by n squared. So again, radius of convergence is going to be 1 divided by the limit as n goes to infinity of the a sub n's, so a 1 over n squared raised to the 1 over n. And again, we could be able to rewrite this limit. It's a little bit ugly. We could rewrite it using natural logs, and then we can be able to use L'Hopital's rule. And we can end up showing that that goes to 0. So we have a 1 over 0, or infinity. So the radius of convergence is going to be infinite. And now because the radius is infinite, that means this converges everywhere. So that means, so, the sum must converge everywhere. Whoop, not corn. Converges, not cornverges. On z equals 1, or even just everywhere. So it converges everywhere on the complex numbers. Now this last one is going to actually be the hardest of the lot. So let's go back and look at this one. This one is actually going to need a technique that um, is actually a really cool technique that is worth knowing about because it can get used and is helpful in a bunch of different situations. So for this one, we are looking at the power series of z to the n divided by n, and we are going to show that it converges everywhere on the unit circle except at z equals 1. So again, the first thing we need to do is look at what is the radius of convergence. So the radius of convergence is 1 divided by the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n raised to the 1 over n, and that can also be shown to be 1, so this goes to 1 over 1, so that's 1. 
So the radius of convergence is 1, it converges everywhere inside the unit circle, it diverges outside the unit circle, and we have to show what happens on the unit circle itself. Well, what we can look at is, let's just deal with the z equals 1 case. So if z is equal to 1, then we are looking at the sum of just 1 over n, which diverges. This is the harmonic series, so it's going to just diverge everywhere. The other case is we are going to look at if z is not 1, but the modulus of z is still 1. If that's the case, then we're going to be able to do something with that. So the way we'll do this is we are going to look at the sum from uh, n equals 1 to some large value n, and we are going to be looking at the limit as that big value of n goes to infinity of z to the n divided by n. Or I'm going to rewrite this just a little bit, and we are going to write this as 1 over little n times z to the little n. So what we're going to need to do here is use what's called partial summation. So partial summation is going to use the following, uh, is, follows the following rules. So if we have the sum from n equals m to big N of a sub n, b sub n, this is equal to a, little a sub big N times big B sub big N minus a sub big M b sub big M minus 1 minus the sum from n equals big M to big N minus 1 of a sub n little n plus 1 minus a sub little n times uh, b sub little n where b sub little n is equal to the sum from k equals 1 to little n of b sub little k. So we are able to do something with this to be able to rewrite this sum. So let's just go through the different pieces as they come out. So this is going to be equal to, well we'll still have the limit as big n goes to infinity of the following a sub big N. So here we are going to say that the 1 over n's is our a sub n, and z sub n, z to the n, is going to be b sub n. So our a sub big N, that's a 1 over big N, times big B of big N. So that's going to be the sum from k equals 1 to big N of z to the k. Then we have minus a sub big M, in this case big M is 1, so that's A sub 1, that's just a 1. B sub 0, that's going to be 0, that's nice. And we have minus the sum from N equals 1 to big N minus 1 of A sub N plus 1, so that's a 1 over N plus 1, minus 1 over N, times B sub little n, so that's the sum from K equals 1 to little n, of z to the k. So that's how we would do that. We would write that down using partial summation. So now let's go through and figure out what exactly is that limit. Okay, we need to show that that goes to zero. Okay, we're going to be looking at this to try and figure out what on earth is this going to in order to show that this has to actually converge. So Let's go through bit by bit and see what we get. So we go through each of these different pieces. Let's see what we go through and get. So this first one, that is going to be a 1 over n. Let's rewrite the sum of z to the k's. We can be able to write that using uh, the um, geometric series form because this is a finite series, we're able to evaluate that. So that's going to be equal to, we have the limit big N goes to infinity of 1 over big N times the sum of that, that goes to Z to the big N plus 1 divided by Z minus 1. We have minus 0 and then minus the sum from N equals 1 to big N minus 1 of Let's see, 
1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n, all of that together, we can be able to rewrite that as a negative 1 over n squared plus n times, again we can rewrite the sum from k equals 1 to n of z to the k as z to the little n plus 1 divided by z minus 1. And because we have this negative and a negative, let's just distribute those out. So we have that. Now let's look at each of these different pieces separately. Okay? So this first one, what happens here? Well, this first piece, that's always, well, we can pull the 1 over z minus 1 out from everything. So let's actually just do that first, and then we'll look at the different pieces. So that 1 over z minus 1, that can come out from everything. And we are left with a limit, let's go back to blue, limit as big N goes to infinity of z to the big N plus 1 over N plus the sum from N equals 1 to big N minus 1 of 1 over N squared plus N times z to the n plus 1. And now what we have to do is we have to show that this converges. Well, this first one, this just goes to 0. Because the size of z to the n plus 1, that's always 1. And so then dividing that by bigger and bigger values of n, that's going to 0. So this first piece, that just goes to 0. Now this second piece, we have to show that that is convergent. Okay. Now the way we do that is we're going to look at this. This is our new a sub n. We have z to the n plus 1s. We need to show that the limit as little n goes to infinity of absolute value of a n to the 1 over n. This, remember, this is going to be 1 over the radius of convergence. Well, this is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared plus n raised to the 1 over n, which looks very similar to the problem that we did earlier, and in fact this does actually go to 0, so 1 over the radius is 0, that means that the radius of convergence of this new series is infinite, which means it converges on the unit circle. So that means that this is going to converge everywhere where z was not 1, and why does that make sense? We have this 1 over z minus 1 that came out from the front, so because that can't have us divide by zero, that means that we have actually finished this problem. So we have been able to successfully show all three of these different pieces. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe, and please share it with other people who are in your math class who might be struggling with these sorts of things. Um, I enjoy making these videos, and I hope that they are helpful. So if it was, please consider liking and subscribing. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and good luck with all of your math.